Hello again, this is Kyle. Let's write some code. Today, we're going to be talking about debugging JavaScript on both the client and the server. So as with all programming, eventually you're going to come across some bugs or unintended things that are happening in your program. And with JavaScript, we have uh, the trusty console log. And it just basically lets us print uh, something out to the screen at some point in time in the, the application, just so we could see what's going on here. So for instance, here we have a, an array of bears and we're splicing off the second item, uh, which is removing the second item. And we are gonna console log out this array to see if it has the intended uh, outcome. And so if we write here node index, we could see that we have our array without uh, without the polar on here, just as we expected. Now, console log works great, uh, but uh, eventually you're gonna you're gonna run into some issues where console log is not so great. So instead of using this array here, we're going to get our bears from this get bears uh, API here. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say get bears require lib get bears. We're gonna require this API here. Um, and then first we want a an array of bears that has no polar bears on it. So we'll say no polar splice and we'll remove, we expect the, the second item in the array to be the, the uh, polar bear. So we're going to remove it there. So we'll say no polar. And then we want another array that has no grizzly. And the grizzly bear is the first item. So we're gonna remove uh, polar bear in this one and we're gonna remove grizzly in this one and then we're just gonna console log out each array and uh, make sure everything is working as, a, as expect here. So let's go ahead and run this program. Whoops, you can see here that uh, our first array is missing the polar bear as expected, but the second array is also missing the polar bear uh, and not just the grizzly bear. So, uh, so console log has let us know this, but it doesn't exactly give us any kind of more clues or it doesn't let us like dive through and step through the code. This is when you want to use a, a debugger to uh, step through and find out the exactly what point our, our program is going wrong. So let's debug on the client side first. I'm gonna type npm start just to fire up Budo and get my uh, dev server running here and that way I can go here to localhost 9966 uh, to, uh, to view the compiled code here. Um, now it, nearly every modern web browser has a debugger built in. Uh, if you're using Chrome you can go here and click on this hamburger and more tools and go to developer tools or just hit uh, the hotkey for um, the developer tools and this will pop it open um, and let you see all kinds of goodies. Uh, I'm gonna open it up here and um, get a bigger nicer view of the entire thing. And so as you can see here, our two console log statements are being printed in the console here. Uh, you can toggle that with the escape key. And then across the top here, we wanna make sure that we are on the sources tab uh, to get a view of our sources. And if you don't see any of the sources uh, loading up, then just refresh the page um, and you should get them loaded up. And as you can see here is we now have a the, the the compiled uh, version of our index file here. Um, and then also the source maps, uh, which are enabled. You can enable them by going uh, into your settings here and then making sure that JavaScript uh, source maps are enabled. And what that will let you do is any, any this is the, the compiled version. It means uh, all these separate files that have been com, you know compiled and bundled together. It will separate them out so you can see the, the files individually on, on how they work and um, even down into the node modules uh, if, you, if you're requiring some of those as well. So let's get to debugging and find out what's going on with our program here. So this line four is the first line in my, my application that I want it to stop on. I basically want uh, it to just, once it hits this line, just stop what you're doing so I can kind of monitor the application state at that point and uh, make you know better debugging decisions at that point. So I'm just gonna click on this line and that adds a, um, a breakpoint. And so now when I refresh the page, as soon as it gets to this line, it's gonna halt everything that it's doing and stop here. And this will let me hover over and monitor of the state of these variables here. And as you can see here, our no polar uh, array contains all these items. And so over here, we can press this, uh, this kind of play button and this will resume the script and, and just continue on executing. Um, but what I wanna do is I wanna go here and I wanna have it go line by line um, so I can figure out exactly what's going on. So if I click this button, it's just gonna step over to the next line that it would execute. And we can go back and uh, 
view the, the variable again and you can see that it has spliced out the polar as we expected. So I'm just going to go through and step over. And before we get into here, what I want to do is I want to step into this get bears function. I want to, instead of just going line by line on this file, I want to jump into this function and find out what exactly, uh, what, what point this application is going wrong. And so to do that, I'm going to use this arrow here to step into um, this part, this function here. And as you can see here, um, when I in, uh, investigate this variable, you can see here that before we've even spliced uh, this uh, uh, grizzly off, uh, we already are missing the, the polar bear. Um, and so you can clearly see from up here that even though we have init this array uh, to have these three items, the first operation is initting the same array. And so that's because this is out here on this scope when it really should belong within this module function scope. So to fix our program here, we just simply go to get bears here and, um, and move this array down to this scope. So every call to this function will get a new fresh bears. And so now I can go here and refresh our debugger and uh, just hit resume. And you can see here we get the, the correct result now and we have fixed our application. So that's great for debugging client-side code, but what about if you're working on Node server-side code here? Um, Node has a built-in debugger. If you type Node debug index, it will let you uh, step through um, each of the code. You can say next, uh, next, and you can step through each line by line, and that works perfectly fine. Um, although I prefer, um, I kind of prefer Chrome's uh, debugger. It's it's quite nicer to have that that kind of level of uh, of debugging. Um, and so uh, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to install a package called uh, Node Inspector by typing in uh, Node I to or for it's a shorthand for install. Uh, node inspector dash G and install node inspector. So once you have node inspector installed, now you can type node dash debug and give it the name of the file. And this is going to use the, the same debugger, but what instead it's going to open up your browser here um, and it's going to use uh, the, the Chrome dev tools um, to debug your server side uh, JavaScript. Um, so you can you can step through uh, your program just like you would uh, a client side app, but this is all server side. So let's say you have a big complex app, and within this app, you know that this get bears function here is called somewhere within the app, but you don't know exactly um, how it, the application actually manages to get to that part of your code, um, and so you can't really go through all the source code and just add a breakpoint. Um, what you can do instead is that if you know, like, if, if you want to find out exactly where or how some some part of your application is getting to a certain part of code, you just go into the code and you add the keyword debugger, and this will basically this is basically setting a breakpoint in your debugger for you, but written into the code. Um, and so if we save this and uh, restart our debugger here. Now when we hit the resume button, it's going to find that debugger statement and stop the code at that line or at that debugger. And now you can go into the call stack and step back and find out exactly where that line, where that piece of code gets called. And as we can see here that the, the next call back, it gets called in this uh, index.js file. So another great tool of the debugger is this watch expressions here. Um, and this is basically you give it a variable name and it gives you a uh, real time uh, view into the value of that variable. So you can just watch it as, as it changes. So I'm going to go back here and close out our debugger. And um, I'm gonna, I have another API here that uh, is meant for giving us lots of bears. Um, and so I can call, I can require this, uh, this API here by saying require lots um, and then uh, call this API here and I want our debugger to stop at this line so I'm just going to add a debugger statement here and fire up our debugger. So since I've added that debugger I can just go ahead and hit resume and I know it's going to stop right there and so now I want to monitor how this bears array gets modified um, 
as the program executes. And so I can go here to watch expressions and um, add the variable name in here. And you can see at this point in time it's undefined because we haven't got to this line yet. And so as soon as we pass this line where it in initializes the array, you can see our array is a empty zero array. And so as we go through this, uh, this for loop, it begins to add bears to um, our array and we can watch it uh, in real time as the program executes. So another thing you can do when you're in the middle of debugging, when the program is completely halted on a line, uh, you can hit escape and open up the, the console here and you can uh, interact with the, the code at the given state that you're at. Uh, so for instance here, if I wanted to do console log bears and, um, and view the array of bears uh, logged out here, I can do so. I can even manipulate the array. Um, so I'll say add bear uh, bears here and add it to it. And uh, you'll notice that our local variable here has increased to five, but our watch expression has not updated. So I'm just gonna hit refresh here and you can see that it's updated here. And so um, this is just a great way if you need to test a specific condition um, and you know, it, as you're debugging the code um, just to find out where the issue is. So another great tool is uh, conditional breakpoints. So as you can see here, I've updated my array that instead of 10 times it goes through, it goes through 100 times. So let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna debug this add bear function here um, and find out, you know, maybe there's something going on. Maybe this, you know, this is obviously a really simple function, but you know, like let's just pretend that it's something complex and there's something broken going on in this function and we need to debug it. Um, but it's being called, you know, 100 times. Um, so let's go ahead and fire up our debugger. All right, and then we'll resume into the application here. And we're gonna set a breakpoint here onto uh, this add bear function here. And what happens is, is it stops there just as expected, but now we're in the loop. And so it's just, I, you know, it, it's, if maybe, maybe the issue happens when it hits 50, you know, number 50. Um, and that's when the things start to fall apart. Um, and so we'll, we'll be clicking all day long, and especially if you have to redo this, it just gets super frustrating. Uh, so what we wanna do instead is uh, we can right click um, or, or command click on the line instead, and we can add a conditional breakpoint, which allows us to give it an expression that must be true in order for it to actually stop and halt in this line. So let's pretend that the, it has to, you know, the, the issue uh, occurs on the 50th one. So we can say um, if the array length um, equals uh, 50, uh, stop on this line. And so now here I can hit uh, resume, and you can see here it has stopped on uh, the 50th one. We have 50 items in our array. And at this point in time, I can start to debug uh, what's going on within this array here. Um, to find the issue, and I don't have to click, uh, you know, next, 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 over and over and over. So I hope this has helped you learn about debugging JavaScript, and if it has, then please share the video and help others learn. Uh, and if you want to see more videos, then please subscribe. Thanks again for watching.